Inside this box is something you guys will be very interested in. Today I'll be showcasing The Force Experience by PU Air Korea. Let's get into it. Hello everyone, it's Brandon here and welcome to the studio. As you can see, I'm talking directly to camera. So if you haven't seen my face before, hello, it's great to meet you. Welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Sim video. Today I'll be showcasing a bit of hardware. Now already I've lied to you, which is terrible. It's not actually inside this box anymore. It's actually set up behind me, the thing I'll be showing you guys today, which is Force Experience by PU Air Korea, who is a developer, I'll be honest. Before he reached out to me, I had never heard of him. I'd never heard of his products but he seemed like a really nice guy really enthusiastic with his product so he very kindly sent me one of his force experiences so today I'll be showcasing that off now of course um, force feedback which is sort of what this is almost going for is normally seen as a very expensive thing in float simming now let me be honest with you this isn't going to go up to the standards um, that your force feedback yokes or indeed throttles go to some of them of which I tried out at this year's FS Expo but in most cases this is a tenth of the price of some of those products and it replicates quite a bit of it. I'm not going to say much more to the camera, instead I'm going to show you. So if you like this sort of video be sure to tell me in the comments so I know to make more in the future and if you're new around here be sure to subscribe. But on that note let me stop waffling and let's look at Force Experience by PU Air Korea. Okay, so to very quickly wrap up what Force Experience by PU Air Korea is all about, PFX for short. This is a brand new bit of hardware that draws information from your simulator, including your state of flight and how you're flying, and will send this information to a variation of motors that you connect up yourself to external flight sim peripherals, whether that be a yoke, a throttle quadrant or your rudder pedals or indeed a side stick. It utilises haptic technology much like your phone does to send vibrations of varying degrees to your hardware to make it feel really alive and give you a true sense of flight. I'll explain more in a moment. Okay, so let's see what we get in the box. Watch me unbox it at incredible speeds. I don't know how I was this quick. Anyway, once we get the box opened, you'll see we've got the Force Experience Hub, which basically is a junction box with all the wires that are connected to the sort of motors that connect to our peripherals. All uses USB-C, by the way. Now, of course, you can see it in the background here on the box. You can see we've got three motors, you can just about see, for the rudder, pedals, the throttle, and the yoke. On the rudder pedals, of course, we've got two for left and right. Now, very easily, these all connect up to the junction box, as you can see on the screen, and they stick to your peripherals, whether that be your yoke or side stick, your throttle quadrant, or your pedals, with double-sided adhesive stickers, which is easy to use, but of course does come with its own issues, as we'll speak about later. Now, I've set this up with all my honeycomb products and my cheap Thrustmaster pedals, but of course, as the developer shows, it can be set up with all forms of Microsoft Flight Sim peripherals. Okay, so now we know what it's all about, let's take a look at the software. Now, you download this off their website, and basically, after you've, after you've plugged it in and set it all up, it really is plug and play. I do recommend running this as, as administrator before every time you fly, um, just because it seems to connect to Microsoft Flight Sim every single time then. So down the left side, we've basically got it just connecting to the simulator. So up the top here, you can swap between these channels. Um, normally I put it on auto and it puts me on COM3. To be honest, I don't really know what that's all about, but it seems to work anyway. Whoops, Daisy, let's bring it back. Go away, Steam. Down here, we've got Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 Connect, so you'll know it's connecting to your simulator. Once again, it's on auto connection, so very rarely, I don't think I've ever had to press connect or disconnect myself. Very quickly, this drop down menu here, while it normally does automatically select it for you, if it doesn't, um, for example, if you've got the Flybo Wire Phoenix 320s or the PMDG 737, you can select them there to have predetermined um, settings, which are down the right side here. For everything else, you basically pretty much want to be on Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 planes. 
Okay, so with test mode, it's pretty obvious. All I need to do is click test mode on, and make sure you're connected to the simulator if you actually want to see um, the motors working. Otherwise, it doesn't really work, so they don't work on their own um, without the sim running, which makes sense, I guess. Let me just turn the microphone up just so you can hear me. Now, at the moment, test value is set to zero, so it's not going to do anything, but have a listen as I move that slider all the way up. It sounded briefly like that meme sound there, which almost made me laugh, um, but I kept composed. So you heard the motors running up there, causing vibrations throughout my throttle quadrant, yoke, and of course, rudder pedals. Down here we've got the sensitivities. I haven't actually touched these, and we could turn it up, but to be honest, they're set at 100 at the moment, so there's not really any point changing them, at least in my experience. If you wanted to feel more vibrations, you could max these out, but I personally haven't done that. And down the right side of the application, as you can see, we've got a variation of controls um, regarding different things in the aircraft, from the gear to the spoilers, to the flaps, to stalling, uh, to the stick shaker. We've got plenty of changes we can make um, to the level of vibration we're getting from force experience. Personally, again, I'm going to recommend you leave it all to sort of default, unless you're flying a sort of vintage aircraft where you would be feeling a lot more vibrations, or indeed a very big one, or going between small aircraft and big aircraft periodically, then you really don't need to be making that many changes. Um, as long as you're using the presets provided, to be honest, that does a pretty good job. There hasn't been a time where I've felt that the vibrations I've been getting um, aren't realistic. I've definitely always felt them. On that note, guys, I'll stop talking about the application. One thing I will say finally is that it's very well designed, very easy to use, and pretty self-explanatory. So kudos to the developer there. Okay, so now for the good bit. We're here in a Fokker F28 in Croatia as part of the New World Update 14. Now I'm going to showcase the best of what this has to offer by putting the aircraft, or quite a few aircraft, through a variety of situations. First off, I'll show you a takeoff here. Now I recommend while I'm talking and when I'm being quiet, you keep an ear out here in the background if you can hear vibrations. Obviously, they're quite difficult to show on the camera unless I get really, really close. So keep an ear out and enjoy. It's really, really cool to see this working. You'll notice vibrations when the gear comes up, when we're going along the runway, putting flaps up, etc. Okay, so a bit of an early rotation with a Fokker there. Now, I don't know if you guys could really hear it on the video as I swapped to external audio, but as we were accelerating along, the vibrations with the brakes were increasing, or rudders, I should say, were increasing as we were going along the runway, picking up speed. And they were also increasing on the yoke and indeed on the throttle, much like it would in the real aircraft. Um, as you're speeding up. And then finally, as we rotated, a lot of the vibrations cooled down, especially on the pedals. As we popped the gear up, we once again felt the vibrations in the yoke and the throttle. And now as we bring some flaps up and turn to the west, I'm still feeling some slight vibrations. That's really, really cool. Now the thing is with this, it's not all about making everything shake and feel somewhat unrealistic. It's just about reminding you of what the aircraft is actually doing. If you fly in real life, you'll of course be familiar with the vibrations you feel for the yoke or for the throttle, or just in general, you, you get a real feeling from the, air, from the aircraft. Now yes, it's mile away from some of the well-known force feedback yokes. Of course it is, it's not controlling anything inside these components. So for example, when the aircraft's out of trim, you're really not going to struggle um, with these vibrations. It almost has no difference. But what it does do, and it does do it so well, 
as I've already said, it reminds you what the aircraft is doing. If you're putting the gear up, you can actually feel it. If you're taxiing on grass, going over some bumps, you can feel it. When you're braking out at the end of the runway, you can feel it. And for 100 US dollars, just over 100 US dollars, I should say, that is really cool. Now, I've got a few more scenarios to show you, so we're going to run through them. Next up, I'm going to chuck this aircraft in a stall. But yes, it is great fun. And it makes you, not 100%, but it brings you closer to the feeling of flight. Now, as we're turning here, we're feeling slight vibrations in everything, which is really, really good. Nothing too heavy, because, of course, we're not doing anything bad to the aircraft. But if I were to showcase that, let's just put the aircraft in a stall. There we go, speed's dropping now. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> and as we're facing the ground and picking up a lot of speed, we also get the vibrations there. So. I may have ripped the wings off there, but you definitely felt that. So there we have it, some great examples of this really being put through its paces. That was a horrific landing with the cetacean longitude. In fairness, it was into a crosswind, um, a very big one, and I haven't flown that aircraft for a while. I don't think that excused my crash, but that's basically um, what it was all about. But at least it showed off the PU um, experience, force experience in all its glory. Now to run through some pros and cons. First off, kicking it off for pros, it is really, really awesome. Okay, yes, I understand it's not like a force feedback yoke, but trust me, I've been flying around with it for weeks now. Uh, mostly, you know, airliners with a 737, but also a bit of general aviation, and I have really enjoyed it. It does exactly what it says on the tin. It's also ridiculously easy to set up, basically plug and play, of course you do have to stick your things um, to your peripherals but that's a given. On top of that it's great value, at the moment this is retailing on the PU um, Korea website for 120 US dollars which is just under 100 UK pounds. You can't get many flights in peripherals for that money nowadays and this one is going to change every single one of them. So from a value standpoint I think it is good value and of course this isn't some big company, this is as far as I know a one man band. That being said, there are some cons to this product. Most of the time, it's sort of a victim of its own success. If you haven't got headphones, of course, because of the nature of the vibrations, it is very noisy. Incredibly noisy at times, especially on landing. And because of that, if, you, if your sound's coming out of speakers and you're flying without headphones, that may annoy you. Also, if you've got family like I do, it means you probably can't use it at night time because at times it can sound like your whole room is shaking. On top of that also being a victim of its success there are plenty of wires about it. Of course it isn't wireless, that's a given, it would be cool if they could make it that but because of that I've now got about four more wires to somehow manage into my setup and to be honest my cable management was terrible already. And I think the big issue with this I've got is the adhesive stickers. It means if you want to swap around with your flight sim peripherals, you've now got to buy more adhesive stickers and you're now left 
with sticky residue on your products and that may be a big no-no for some people but those are literally my only complaints and I don't think they're big ones just know what you're getting into if you do want to buy it and if you do like what you see and trust me it's very good I've very much enjoyed it you can get 10 US dollars off at checkout with the code pilot start so there we go if you've watched 15 minutes into this video thank you very much have a little reward thanks to me and PU Air Korea Okay guys, so I really hope you enjoyed this video, it's always great fun to whip out my camera, set it up nicely and speak to it, and I think it's just better to connect to you guys basically, and of course you get to see my incredibly ugly face. On that though guys, leave your thoughts on Force Experience down below, I'd really love to hear it. As you've heard in this video, I think it's a fantastic product. Of course it's not perfect, but nothing ever is. Um, if you're going towards Force Feedback, it's a great step up, and at a tenth of the cost. Have a good one, I'll see you all around. It's been Brandon on the Pilot Stud channel. Bye bye.